In this Game Boy Advance RetroArch guide, we'll take a look at which core to choose, the best emulation settings, and sweet shaders to make it all look pretty. Let's get started. First, let me mention that if you need help with something that's not covered in this video, please check out our RetroArch tutorial playlist. In it, you'll find videos on everything from configuring controls and graphic settings to adding cheats and understanding the config override system. It's very helpful. Now on to the good stuff. Let's begin by downloading a Game Boy Advance Core. So from the RetroArch main menu, you want to open the online updater and then the core downloader. We'll scroll all the way down to the Nintendo Game Boy Advance cores, and we find that there's four to choose from. I would recommend either the MGBA or VBA-M core. Both of them perform extremely well and have very good accuracy. Personally, I prefer the MGBA core because I feel like it has a, a tiny bit better performance on my computer. However, one feature that VBA-M has is that it allows you to emulate the motion controls that were built into some Game Boy Advance cartridges. So if you're planning on playing any motion controlled games, you might want to go with VBA-M. But really, whatever you choose, um, they're both great emulators, as I mentioned, and the settings discussed in the rest of this video will apply to both cores. Next up, from the main menu, go into Settings and then Drivers, and change your video driver to Vulkan. If your system supports it, you will generally get better performance using the Vulkan driver. Now if your system doesn't support it or for some reason you have issues running Vulkan, then go ahead and switch back to the GL driver. Also in the main menu, head over to Video and then Scaling. And this is a personal preference, but I like to set the aspect ratio to Core Provided. This way we get the original 3-2 aspect ratio of the Game Boy Advance, which is what I feel looks best. Now some shaders re require the setting to be at full, and I'll cover that a little bit later in the video. But if you prefer a different ratio, however, please, by all means, go with what you like best. To add Game Boy games to RetroArch, from the main menu, select Import Content, and then Scan Directory. We'll navigate to the directory containing our Game Boy Advance games and then select scan this directory. Now when you go back out to the main menu you should see a Game Boy Advance playlist entry. We can open it up, select a game, and then run it with our Game Boy Advance core. With a Game Boy Advance game running we can now enter the RetroArch quick menu and by default it's accessed by pressing F1 on the keyboard. We'll go down to Core Options and then the Video menu. There are two settings in here that we're interested in. The first is Color Correction. Now by default this is turned off. However, if we want to mimic the original color scheme of the Game Boy Advance hardware, which was a little bit darker and more washed out, we can select the Game Boy Advance option. Now I prefer more vibrant colors, so I'm going to leave this at off. The other option is Inner Frame Blending. What is Inner Frame Blending? Well, there are some Game Boy Advance games that use the response time of the original Game Boy Advance LCD screen to give the illusion of transparency. A good example of this is F-Zero. When emulating it, and having inner frame blending turned off, we can see the track map is flickering off and on. It's really quite annoying. However, with inner frame blending set to smart, we see the track map no longer flickers and gives the appearance of being transparent. Now, most of the time the setting can be set to off, but when you play a game that requires it, I would recommend setting it to simple or smart. If you want to change these settings and have them apply to only one game rather than all of your Game Boy Advance games, it's very simple to do so. Just go to Manage Core Options in the Core Options menu and select Save Game Options. Now let's talk about shader settings. There are a boatload of shaders to choose from, but I'm just going to cover the ones I feel work best for Game Boy Advance games. First, let's make sure that we have the latest shader files downloaded. 
by going to online updater in the main menu then update shaders. This will either read update slang shaders if you chose the Vulcan driver or update GL SL shaders if you're still on the GL driver. It might take a bit to download depending on your connection. So now back in the quick menu go down to shaders, turn video shaders on and then go down to load. The first shader we'll take a look at is the Scale FX shader. To get to it, go into the Shaders Slang folder if you're using the Vulkan driver, or Shaders GLSL if you're using the GL driver, then the Edge Smoothing folder, the Scale FX folder, and then select the Scale FX shader. As we look at it, the Scale FX shader tries to make the pixels of the image looks smoother and more refined via an upscaling algorithm. Now keep in mind this is just a recommendation. I like the scale FX filter for some games but not so much for others. It's not a be-all end-all and I don't believe any shader is. So as always tinker around and decide on what you like. The next shader we'll look at is the LCD Grid version 2 shader you can find it in the handheld subdirectory of the shaders folder. This shader uses a grid effect to emphasize the individual pixels so that the video output looks more like an older LCD screen. I think this is a nice option. However, to me, handheld games generally don't look good when played full screen on a large monitor. So for that reason, I mainly prefer using our next shader, which is the handheld border shader from developer Tatsuya79. It's very similar to the LCD grid shader, but paired with a Game Boy Advance overlay and some really nice bells and whistles. It's not included with RetroArch, so we will need to download it from the web. The link will be in the description. And once you have the zip downloaded, just open it up and drag the contents into your RetroArch shaders folder. Now with a Game Boy Advance game loaded in RetroArch, we'll again go into the quick menu and then to shaders. We're going to load a shader and we'll go into the handheld border folder and we want to load the GBA-4X shader. With the shader loaded, if you notice that the sides of the overlay are cut off, you'll need to go back into the video settings from the RetroArch main menu, go into the scaling area and turn the aspect ratio to full and that should fix it. This really is my favorite Game Boy Advance shader at the moment. To me it just looks so much better scaled down and feels more immersive with this really classy GBA overlay. But if we go back into the shaders menu and then open the shader parameters we see that there's quite a few things here we can tweak and I'm not going to explain all of these. You can experiment but I will highlight just a couple. First of all, we can adjust the scale of the video output. By default, it's at 4x. However, you can scale it up or down to make the output bigger or smaller. Now, personally, I prefer 3x, but that's just me, and you might like something different. We also have this interesting feature, the LCD response time setting, which operates very similar to the interframe blending in the core options. If you like the blurring or ghosting effect that is seen on original Game Boy hardware, you can tinker with the setting and turn it up or down. Personally, I like to leave it at zero because when it's on, it just gives me a headache. So I like it completely off. Now, once you have your shader settings dialed it in where you like them, you can save them so that they'll load automatically with every Game Boy Advance game by going to save and then saving it as a core preset. Or if you only want it to load with a specific game, you can save it as a game preset. That will do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful, and if so, please consider giving a like, dropping a comment, and maybe even subscribing to the channel. Until next time, happy gaming, my friends.